Hello friends, in this video tutorial we will be talking about RNA extraction. RNA extraction. RNA extraction is also known as another chemical form of extraction that I will be writing here. But the thing is RNA extraction means in different processes in biology where we need to do the in vitro study of the translation or in vitro study of the protein synthesis and the gene expression level on all these things, we need to separate the RNA from the cell. And we know inside the cell there are multiple number of RNA, different types of RNA present. Now when we talk about RNA extraction, we mainly talk about extraction of mRNA, right? And that's most of the time important because we want to look at the protein expression and mRNA is related with the expression of the proteins because these are the coding segments which will code for proteins. So we separate those mRNA. Now even if in some RNA extraction we extract the whole content of RNA, then we separate mRNA from rRNA and the tRNA and we can do that using the uh, poly uh, column, different columns are there, tNA columns are present where we can do this stuff. But the thing is in this case, RNA extraction we mean about the mRNA extraction majorly in this case. And uh, the method I am going to talk about is a conventional old age method because nowadays this method is being modified several times and new kits are available and the process are easier. But previously it is kind of difficult. Even in this case compared with the DNA extraction, extracting RNA from a cell is much more complicated because the major problem is RNAs. RNAs is an enzyme which can break down RNA. It can break down RNA from different regions. So RNA can be degraded if it is encountering with that RNA's enzyme and that RNA's enzyme is present inside the cell. It is present all around us all the time. In our cases we talk DNA's, RNA's, all this enzyme well filled with. So it's kind of very difficult to work with RNA because it is very very less stable. In the acidic or alkylic conditions in most of the cases the RNA get destabilized. If the pH is not properly maintained RNA gets destabilized. If the environment gets slightly changed the RNA gets destabilized and degraded very often. So that's why it makes RNA extraction much more difficult. But still let's look at the process. For RNA extraction we look at we are looking the process called acid guanidium thiocyanate acid guanidium thiocyanate phenol chloroform extraction. This is the chemical name of this process. But if you know this name, you will know the process also because that is what everything in inside the name. Acid guanidium thiocyanate phenol chloroform extraction. That is the extraction process of RNA or RNA extraction. I probably, you probably heard this name chloroform, phenol chloroform extraction. Phenol chloroform extraction uh, can also be used for the DNA extraction also because the process kind of similar there using phenol chloroform, right? And this is where we talk about the conventional method because nowadays this phenol chloroform extraction is generally not used because both of these cases are not good things. Chloroform is harmful as well as phenol for uh, individual to handle. So that's why we exclude this stuff nowadays. But still this is the conventional method that I'm going to talk about. And here you can see three different things. One is acid, that means pH. Guanidium thiocyanate, this is a particular factor. This is another thing, this is the second thing that we will, we will be talking about, this is the first one. And third one is the phenol chloroform. These are the three components which are in very very important for RNA extraction in conventional method. Now what are their function? First thing is the pH. I have told you that the pH is very important for keep this RNA stabilized, right? So in this case also the pH of RNA during the extraction, the pH of the environment is very, very important. Why? Because during the process of RNA extraction, let us go back to these two things, then we will come back to the pH, it will be better. The first thing, let us talk about this phenol chloroform gradient. The actual idea of RNA extraction is that we will break down the cell. That is very, very important. We will break down the cell wall, we will crack the cell open, break down the cell membrane, crack the cell open and once the cell is open, I mean the cytosolic contents are out in, into the solvent out there. In that case, in that condition, so that mixture will be made with proteins, DNA, RNA and all these components. 
Now, among those components, protein, DNA, and all these things, pH plays a vital role as well as this phenol chloroform gradient. Why do you use this phenol chloroform altogether? Because this phenol and chloroform altogether they cause a gradient. This gradient helps in phase separation. This phenol chloroform gradient helps in the phase separation. What do we mean by phase separation? The idea here is chloroform is an organic solvent. It's an organic solvent. Organic solvent means organic molecules are soluble in the chloroform, but not the inorganic. The inorganic molecules are soluble in phenol. So, if we add phenol and chloroform in equal proportions, in a particular quantity, in a tube, it creates two different barriers, right? Chloroform and phenol, two different barriers. In that chloroform and phenol barrier, what we will see, say, we will see the barrier of chloroform, let's write it this way, chloroform, phenol. And all, if, if we add the mixture of solution containing organic and inorganic molecules, as well as organic molecules even, we are going to see some of those molecules, most of the organic molecules, they are solubilized in the chloroform. So, they will, found, they will be found here in the, in the chloroform section, and the chloroform phase. But the other things, they will found, we will find them in the phenol phase, which is called as the aqueous phase. So, this phase of aqueous and organic, this is very, very important. And this phase separation between the organic phase and aqueous phase is brought by due to this phenol chloroform gradient that is formed. Naturally, if we add both this two together, mix it, then allow it to stay, this gradient form. So, this is the situation. So, we know some part of them are going to be placed in this chloroform barrier section. Some of them are going to play the phenolic section or the aqueous section. These are the three things that we think. Now here, after taking out, after crushing the cell, we will take out the mixture. Remember, now the mixture contains proteins, RNA, DNA. Majorly these are the things. Other cell components and debris are there. They are very huge. We, we do a quick spin. And we take out the, those debris, I mean all those cellular components, fractionized cellular contents, we just take them out. So, we only left with proteins, RNA and DNA, which, which we use for this phenol chloroform gradient separation. Now, remember we add guanidium thiocyanate. Now, it comes the role of number 2, the guanidium thiocyanate. Now, guanidium thiocyanate can degrade these proteins as well as RNAs. RNAs are the enzymes that will degrade RNA, destabilize RNA and we do not want that. If RNAs are present in any small content, it will ruin the whole experiment. So, you want to get rid of these RNAs. So, we find guanidium thiocyanate is an excellent agent to find the RNAs and break them down. Right? So, we add them. We add guanidium thiocyanate in the mixture and allow it for, for some time, so that it can break down the RNAs, RNAs are gone, so as other protein components, they are also degraded. So, we now do not have any proteins, they are degraded, as well as RNAs, they are also degraded. So, we left with RNA and DNA component. Using this guanidium thiocyanate, we exclude these two things. We have only RNA and DNA component in our hand. Now, what we need, we need to separate this RNA from DNA. And that is usually done using this pH, using this pH gradient. This is very, very important. Because remember, we know there are two different phases, aqueous phase and organic phase, right? So, aqueous, aqueous, organic. The idea here, if the pH, if the pH is acidic, Remember, if the pH is acidic, in that case, RNA is going to be separated or stay in the aqueous phase, 
DNA will stay in the organic phase. But if the pH is neutral, then RNA and DNA both are going to stay in the organic phase. So this is very, very important. So if we make this whole experiment in the neutral pH, where we most of the time do the experiments, in that case, we won't be, un we won't be able to separate the RNA from DNA. Because in this pH, both of them, RNA as well as DNA, are re will remain in the organic phase. They are not coming out in the aqueous phase. But if we apply the acidic pH, in that case, RNA will be in the aqueous phase, while DNA will remain in the organic phase. So, this pH, this acidic pH helps and make this RNA, force the RNA to come in the aqueous phase and force the DNA to stay in the organic phase. So, that is why we use acidic environment in this particular case. One thing I made a small mistake is that I have told that if the pH is neutral, RNA and DNA both are going to be in the aqueous phase, not organic. Both are in going to play in the aqueous phase, sorry. So, again the, the uh, concept remains the same that this RNA and DNA, if we have the neutral pH, if we continue the experiment in the neutral pH, we will get, if we take out the aqueous phase, we get both RNA and DNA, but we do not want that. We want RNA only. So, we do the acidic environment. In acidic environment, RNA only will be in the aqueous phase, DNA will be in the organic phase. So, you know, aqueous phase is only used in the top. So, the RNA components will be here at the aqueous phase. So, what we can do here? We can simply take out this aqueous component. And from this aqueous component, we get our RNA out. From this, we make it dry and we can store it in. So this is how the process of RNA extraction works. So, if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friend in social networks, subscribe to my channel to get more biology technique videos like this. Thank you.